Oh, we might as well kick this thing off. My name's Andy Dubois. I'm a concerned citizen here, liberty-minded, concerned citizen. My dear friend, many friends that are in this room asked me to come down here tonight and MC this thing with you guys. I want to thank you so much for for showing up on this very, very important topic, one of the most important topics in my lifetime, election integrity. It's uh, critical to the survival of our, of our republic. And I'd like to, again, welcome you. Thank you for coming. Please silence your cell phones if you could. One thing that I often overlook, in fact, oh, I should look. Because uh, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. Mandatory donation. You still owe the RLC 50 bucks. <laughs> I do. I do. I owe the RLC, the Republican Liberty Caucus of Lake Sumter. I own 50 bucks. Because I got caught one night with myself and went on after I asked everybody else to turn theirs off. Still up from very good. Thank you, everyone. We, we begin all events with a, a prayer and a pledge. And my dear friend Chuck Benoit is going to lead us in prayer. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we are uh, just very grateful for your presence here with us tonight. We ask that uh, the meeting go uh, according to plan and uh, that there would be a uh, comfort level in, uh, with all involved. We pray a specific plus. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, everyone. We have uh, three basic segments to our format tonight. The first one is going to include 30 minutes from our election integrity and voter protection coalition folks that are sitting at this table right beside me. We're going to have 30 minutes uh, from three different candidates. That'll be 10 minutes each. And then we will have a 30-minute question and answer period from the audience to the, the folks that are going to be up here, the candidates and the election integrity folks. And then we'll have uh, some, some mingling after that. So that's, that's basically the format. We hope to be out of here uh, before or at 9, 9 p.m. at the latest. And our, our first part of our program is with a group called the Election Integrity and Voter Protection Coalition. And I've been involved with these folks since their inception, which was started here in Lake County soon after the 2020 election. And these folks started the organization. There was many other folks that started it with you. But these, these ladies here have been the worker bees these folks have drilled down into our current election process, not only in Lake County, but in adjoining counties and also at the state level. And they have an uh, immense amount of information to share with you tonight. And uh, they're, they're still standing. They have stuck with it. There was, there was a, a pretty large group in the beginning. And they, they have stuck with it. And they're the, uh, our knowledge our knowledge base for the current election process. And I'm going to turn it over to their prescribed leader tonight, Sue Parent. And we're going to let these folks share with you for 30 minutes. And I'm going to put the timer on. <laughs> Sue, you're up. This is Sue Parent. Give her, give her a hand, please. Hey, everybody. Um, as Andy said, and I'm not going to take up a lot of time because I know I'm on the clock. But um, we got together in 2021. We will not stop until probably we're dead. And if the government has their way, that'll be sooner than later. Um, but we, um, I'm Sue Parent, June Lang. She's going to start us out, Diane Venetta, and Mary Venata. And as Andy said, we have been digging in the voter rolls since uh, July of 2021. And what we have found, we have shared with the governor, the secretary of state, all our county commissioners, all our, I mean, anybody who is anybody that should be paying attention to what we're talking about and don't. Um, so we 
we're not stopping. And it's kind of fun for us to get back together and do this again because it's been a while since we've been able to make our presentation. And we do have some new information, and please save your questions for afterward. June's going to start us off. Uh, June and I went to an electric conference last summer um, in Orlando, and what we found was very interesting, and that's what she's going to talk about right now. Just walk in front of me. So, as uh, you were told, we have been researching elections for the last few years, and we brought all of our findings to so many people, and um, unfortunately, it didn't really go the way we thought it would go. <laughs> we thought that we would get much more response, and we were always wondering, how are all these anomalies and all these findings going unanswered or ignored? Um, and uh, so when Sue and I went last year to Orlando oh, come on. to a national He's blocking the shot. of election workers, we kind of understood why what was going on was going on. Um, the um, people that put on the, um, the conference was called the Election Center Conference. It's the National Association of Election Officials. And um, I want you to know that the uh, three people from Florida, Bill Cowles, Wesley Wilcox, and Mark Early, are Hall of Famers. I got the brochure. So, um, but uh, there were many, many uh, different places that you could go and listen to different uh, groups that talked. Can we, can we turn the lights off here because it's glare on the screen? Thank you. I'm going to be going through these pretty quickly in a second here. I'm just trying to give you an understanding of what this conference was about. The EAC is really how the government funds all election. It's the umbrella, and it came out of the HAVA Act. It's, it's really how everything now is, is under. Um, and it, it, they, they take care of voting equipment, election administration, grants. They have everything. They have 19 different areas where the EAC is involved. And it's the federal government in our elections. Um, so here's, um, they have certifications that they do for people that um, they do continuing education to have the certifications. Um, it, that's a certification out of Auburn University. Um, EVIC is out of Portland State University. There's the Brennan Center for Justice was there. There are New York University School of Law. There's the Bipartisan Policy Center. I don't think they're very bipartisan. They're from Washington, D.C. Uh, there's the Center for Inclusive Democracy. They were from um, South Carolina, California. I don't know. Um, of course, there was Eric, and social media was there, uh, USA Today, Meta was there, um, of course, um, Edison Research, the AP were also there. I was happy when I found out that MIT was there, I thought, oh good, an academic organization committed, oops, to the scientific analysis of election administration. We collect, disseminate, and analyze data, conduct, and disseminate rigorous scientific research, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, yes, yes. But then their areas of research are correcting misperceptions about voter fraud, and the election workforce, and combating misinformation, public trust in elections. That's what MIT is, their areas of research. Then, of course, there's the Center for Civic Design. Does that, if you know what that organization is, that's right out of Soros. They are not bipartisan. <laughs> the Carter Center from Atlanta, <coughs> Georgia. Um, their mission 
is to learn about the Carter Center's approach to nonpartisan election observation and other ways that we can support election officials, such as our mental health and wellness guide. That's what they're worried about nationally for their election work. And of course, the United States Post Office is a partner with them, and they're happy to be partners. And they go all across the country all year round doing all sorts of um, workshops for them. And SISA brags about working closely and being their security for resilience. Now, SISA was recently cyber hacked. And um, I don't know if you uh, have heard about that, but they are not secure. <laughs> and the FBI was there, and I was thinking, okay, FBI. Hopefully they're gonna talk about what they're doing to secure <coughs> our elections. Their election crimes unit you know, was about voter suppression, threats about election workers, fraud campaigns, finance crimes, scam packs. But then their resource was the Carter Center for Mental Well-Being and the Princeton University about de-escalation resources and the National Association of State Election Workers. I mean, it, when I finally was, I was waiting for them to say, okay, how many crimes have been committed against all these poor little election workers? They cited seven cases. These were the cases that were cited. That's throughout the country, United States versus, throughout the country. Those are the cases. And, and some of them were dropped. Some of them were acquitted, acquitted at trial. The last one that came up, and I was so happy, I'm like, all right, Committee for Safe and Secure Elections. Yes. Although he is from California, but okay. But their um, idea was to develop solutions that respond to help curb the rise in intimidation, threats, and violence against election workers. So there was nothing about chain of custody or machine vulnerability or anything that really secures our elections. They are all in complete denial of what's happening in our elections. They think we are ignorant and we need to be educated. Um, and here are the sponsors. Election systems and software, better known as ES and S. They are the vendors for our election machines in Lake County. VR Systems runs the elections from front to back. And Blue Crest is just another uh, VR Systems. And Diane's going to tell you a little bit about VR Systems. Thank you, Jim. So I'm just going to be real brief. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with VR Systems. But as June said, they do run all of the elections in the 67 counties. If you listen to the Secretary of State, Ford Bird will tell you that no, the state runs their voter data registration base. However, if you go to VR Systems' own website, Voter Focus is the software, and they quite clearly say that their process is voter registration applications for the state of Florida using the Voter Focus software. So all of our registration data is held by the state as well as by the county, but the Florida uh, VR Systems Voter Focus software has access to all of that. And through a series of public records requests, we actually got the contracts where it says quite clearly some of the limitations on the VR systems is that they're not allowed to copy the voter registration records, that all of that has to be kept private, etc. My question is, is why would that be in the, con uh, in the contract if you don't have access to that data. So there's a reason. Every county has the same contract. I will uh, point out that Lake County is the only one that charged me money to get that information. So I said, no, thank you. I got it from all the other nice counties, and they didn't charge me anything for it. The reason I think this is important especially is because for any of you who have not heard about the Red Belly Road incident, there it is. 
So when we had the recently uh, redistricting of the precincts across the state of Florida, uh, new voter ID cards went out to all the voters. Well, here's Alan Hayes standing in front of a card of over 18,000 undeliverable voter ID cards that came back. So in the course of this revelation, we realized that in one of them, the actual entire street name was changed. The reason given was precinct change. I don't know about you, but I think that's just the number. It's not your home address. So we did a public records request for that information to find out who changed it and why. And it was an automated uh, system response from voter focus. So your local SOE office did not do it. But when we brought it to their attention, Sue went door knocking and actually had a picture of the Red Belly Road ID card to prove that it was there. Alan Hayes came up with all these kind of excuses. It was 911. They did it. They did it. No, Voter Focus actually did it. Now, why would they do that? And what else are they changing in our system that nobody knows about? Once we brought it to their attention, though, you can look through the public records request. There's a transaction record for every single change in your voter record. And the employees in your local <coughs> office actually went and changed it back once we brought it to their attention. How many more of those are happening? Okay, this is going to kind of be like walking and chewing gum at the same time, trying to push buttons and talk to you guys. All right, so I just happened to find this cool little video today, and I want you guys to hear this. Can you see that okay? Yeah. All right, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but listen to this. Your question. If there was a basketball game between some random people in the street, told the winner was going to get $10,000, and there was no referee, do you think that somebody might try to cheat? Exactly. So if people out on the street will cheat for ten thousand dollars, you're telling me the people in charge of the world aren't gonna cheat to keep control? They're not gonna trick the general populace to keep us all as slaves? We're talking about cheating over a little basketball game. You're talking about they're not gonna cheat an election to control the free world? Of course they'll cheat. This is humans will all cheat. This is the exact point. These people in charge of all this stuff, all they've ever done is cheat. Why would they play by the rules? You can't risk losing. Let me ask you a question. How's that for a little eye opener? All right, now I have to figure out how to get this resume. This one? Uh oh. All right. Okay, so I'm good. All right, so one of the things that I want to talk about is that our voter rolls are the fuel source for types of fraud, and there has to be a change in how voter rolls are managed before we'll see any integrity in the future of our elections moving forward. Florida, and I don't know how many people are aware of this, but we have a private association of supervisors of elections called FSE Inc. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah. Most of you, good. Well, they meet in private without input from the citizens who put them in their office, and then their lobbyist goes to Tallahassee to try and enact the bills that will further protect the supervisors of elections from harassment from us and prohibit us, the citizens, from asking questions or even uh, deterring our ability to access publicly available information through public records requests. And does anyone want to take a guess who the S FSE Legislative Committee Chair is? Bingo. Who is he? Alan Hayes, our supervisor of elections. Okay, yeah, just so oh. they know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, and he actually admitted to Tom Vale that he was the author of the attempt at a harassment bill that was put into session last month. And this is all because we ask questions and he doesn't like us asking questions. So, much like the majority of our country, our elected officials don't want to believe there are issues with the gold standard of elections in Florida. And at every opportunity, they will espouse that they follow the statutes, but in actuality, many of those statutes are not enforced. And Mary's going to talk about that in a little bit. So this slide may look familiar to you. So a major problem with our voter rolls is the number of inactive registrants. And in May of 2022, as Diane said, new voter information cards were mailed to all registrants. And when our team made the public records request to find out if they would be removed from the rolls before the August 22, I'm sorry, November 2022 election, we were told nothing would be done with 
those 22,000 undeliverable voter cards until December. So that was a little bit of a question for us. But think about how much of our taxpayer money the supervisor of elections wasted on mailing out ballots to those undeliverable ad addresses. We, with our own money, went in for three days and scanned over 22,000 documents, over 600 were returned ballots. So, what was it, 1,372 of these undeliverables actually voted in the 2022 election? Okay. I, I just want to show you, I'm probably loud enough, I just want to show you that we have the proof, in fact, because we mailed out our own postcards and these came back to us from the United States Postal Service. These people voted in the election. Oddly enough, two of these individuals were made inactive in the month of June 2023 and then put back active again. So they're active, one month they're inactive, and then they're active again. So who's doing that? Why are they doing that? And how are you voting by mail from an undeliverable address? Food printout. So um, if we can't see how and when the records are activated or inactivated, then there is no transparency. And actually, Diane has one of the voter records from Red Belly Road um, where it does show they don't want us to know that we can order these records, where it actually shows in here that the address was changed by voter focus in June of 2022, and it was and an absentee ballot was requested by this gentleman on Red Belly Road. Funny thing is here, I have an affidavit from said gentleman. He has never in his life requested a vote by mail ballot. And it went to Red Belly Road, and which doesn't exist, was returned undeliverable, and he voted from Red Belly Road. How does that happen? Just asking. That's the question. That's the question. Million dollar question. So in Lake County alone, as you'll see on this slide, 23 registrants were removed from the rolls in December following the election, like I already said. Ask yourself, did those include the 22,000 that we scanned that were undeliverable? Were those the same voters that were mailed vote by mail ballots and now they're taken out of the system? Then in June of 2023, 68,000 additional registrants were changed to inactive steps. Combine those two events, that represents over 30% of the registered voters in Lake County at that time. 30%. Are you okay with that? We have been asking for investigation into things that we found since 2021. And now all of a sudden, bam, 91,000 off the records. Or inactive, I should say. So inactive registrants can lead to the problem of falsified votes being counted. Hey, I can't talk. Would you go at the same time? I have five minutes. Is that what you said? You've got 10 minutes. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry. Anyway, we have so much to talk about, you guys. But the biggest thing is um, there's a problem with Inactive registrants, they're just everywhere, and then we have registering voters who aren't issued proper state ID. And that's a problem because these people are voting. They can make up falsified votes and add them into the system. And again, this is going to have to be something that we do a whole other presentation on because it's a, it's a lot. So um, ask yourself, how is it that millions of Republicans, Democrats, and non-party affiliated voters across the country can go register to vote, but they don't know their social security number, their birthday, or their name. 12 million of them did that in uh, 2020. So Mr. Hayes keeps telling us that what happens in other states isn't relevant in Lake County. Do you really expect us to believe that we're the only county in this country that isn't experiencing, it isn't experiencing any of these issues that's going on? When we're called liars and spreaders of disinformation, what do we then call the state-provided databases? Lies? 
this information that they're giving to us so we can turn around and give it to our supervisors of elections with questions. We're not spreading disinformation and lies. We're taking the information out of the state-provided voter rolls, doing our due diligence, knocking on their doors, and we're being called liars. We're being called out for it. One last thing. Um, how many times have you guys heard or have you heard of anybody say they tried to vote but they were told they already voted? Does anybody know anybody that's happened to? What happens when someone uses your credit card? You get a fraud alert. The person that perpetrated that fraud can be charged with the crime of identity theft. That's why we came out in 2022 and asked people to call the sheriff if they were, if they were told they already voted. Much to the chagrin of supervisor of elections. But regardless of what he says, if that's identity theft. When someone steals your vote, that is identity theft. We're quite certain that the employees at the Lake County SOE office office are not making these changes themselves, as Diane told you, and we have on record here. It's being done by both voter focus, and that's a third party vendor. Mary's going to talk more about that right now. But just keep in mind, why will our supervisor of elections not work with us? We are asking too many questions that are hitting close to home, and that needs to change. And so does our supervisor of elections. Okay, I'm going to go pretty fast. Um, I just want to kind of set the stage. Anything that I talk about, any reference I have, you're more than welcome to come back and we'll show you the statute, we'll show you the policy, anything you want. Um, please take a look at the boards that are on the window because these are kind of the highlights of what we're talking about. Uh, First, I just want to put you in the right mind frame. If you have a question about something, what do you do? You ask the people who should know. You research. You might look at statutes. You might look at uh, federal law. You might look at policy, any legal precedent. So that's what we did. Our intent when we went to our SOE at the time was to ask questions. We knew a lot of people had the same questions we did. So we went and we said, please tell us, you know, these answers, tell us if we're thinking of something incorrectly. Let us know if we're wrong, and we'll share that information with everyone we talk to. Because we can have other hobbies than this. That would be nice. So, um, so say you have a bank account, and you look at your statement, and it's $1,000 less than you thought it was going to be. What do you do? You look at your your spending, did you do a withdrawal that you forgot about? You might go to your bank and you say to your bank, hey, can, your banker, can you help me? I don't understand what happened to my money here. It looks like I have $1,000 less than I should. If your banker called you a liar, you would look for a new bank, right? It's your money. You're asking a question, maybe you're wrong. And that's what you would get. If you're wrong, the banker would say, no, here's what happened. When we asked our SOE questions, we got no response. We gave him data that we got out of the official voter roll voter history. And we said, hey, we have a question about these. It looks like the statute said, for example, you have to do required maintenance of the rolls. Um, you're supposed to remove people who have fictitious addresses, for example. I'll speak to that one because there's a lot. Um, and it looks like we haven't removed any. It looks like when we look at the voter rolls, we see addresses that don't make sense. For example, if you've ever done voter registration, um, you can take a look at the voter registration form that's in that middle board over there. And it says, for residents, you may not use a P.O. box. Well, a P.O. box can come from the post office, but it can also come from a UPS store or a mail service center. So that's called a private mailbox. So what we did, because we ran across these weird addresses, we just Googled UPS stores, private mailbox stores, and we got the addresses in Lake County, and we did it for the whole state. And we found people registered. Let's say there's a UPS store at 123 Main Street in Tavares. We looked the address up, and sure enough, you know, we see people registered to vote as their residential address at that store. What happens is, with a lot of post office boxes, 
people will use 123 Main Street, and instead of your P.O. box of 110, it would say Unit 110 or Suite 110. <coughs> now, why is that important? Because to be eligible to vote in Florida, you have to be a Florida resident, you have to be a resident of the county where you vote, and you have to be a U.S. citizen. Let's hope that sticks. Um, <coughs> or that someone's looking. So when you don't give a real address for a real residence, and there's law behind what that means, um, we don't know if you're a Florida resident. You can have a residential address plus a mailing address. If your only address is a, is a post office box, private mailbox, then where do you live? Where do you sleep? Where do you make a sandwich? It's not in the PO box, right? So all we're asking is for the law that's already in existence to be followed. That's simple. We're not liars. We're not spreading disinformation. We can show you the statute. We can show you the voter rolls. So there, there's no question of what we're saying. The post office themselves says um, you're not allowed to use a PO box for your street address for mailing from the post office, official mailings, but it's happening in our voter rolls. Why? Why is that not being stopped? So if you've heard any conversation, have been in a meeting with our SOEs, you'll hear that we follow the statute. We always follow the statutes. Well, that's one statute that is being violated. We also hear that, okay, so someone, there's a lot of issues, I'm going to do this quickly, there, there are apartments just like Sue was saying, how do you register and not know your date of birth? How do you not know where you live? Have you ever filled out anything where you have to put your address down? You know your apartment number. So there are tens of thousands of addresses in our voter rolls that don't have an apartment number. The post office says they're undeliverable. But they're still allowed to vote. Why? If they're voting by mail, how are they getting their ballot? If the post office can't deliver it, who can't? The last uh, category, um, this is, you know, non-traditional voters. Say you live in an RV, you use a campground as your residential address. Then you have a mailing address, it's out of state. We go to the campground and we say, hey, you guys collect mail for people and send it to them, forward it to them. And they'll say, no, we have, you know, the documents that say campgrounds who have said, we're not allowed to use our address as your residential address for any purpose. Yet they're registered there. The SOE, by statute, is supposed to follow up and clean out those addresses. So if you want, uh, when we're done, there's a chart here that shows the last couple of years of all the counties in Florida and how many people they removed and under the statutory requirements of removals. And I'll tell you, for addresses, it's going to be hard to read across all these rows. Lake County has zero. They've never found a bad address. Never found an address we didn't like. So we're spreading this information, but there are the facts. Um, the last thing, in his own words, we asked um, the SOE's office, how do you vet a new application for a voter? Because remember, those forms are applications to become a voter. When you apply for a job, you don't show, you apply on Thursday, show up on Friday, think you're going to work. You get evaluated. Are you eligible for the job? Are you eligible to be a voter? So we said, how are you vetting the addresses? And they said, in writing, we take the address, whatever the person tells us is their address, we accept it. Well, gosh, that's a violation of statute. But go ahead and tell us that you always follow statute. So the last thing I'm going to say is, when you put someone in office, whatever the role is, you've elected someone to office, if you can't ask them any questions, how are they your representative? That's right. Thank you very much. And that last statement, when Alan sent out an email to several uh, citizens who had emailed their concern, he said in, their, in the response, you're welcome to look at it, I, too, did not have a complete understanding of the nuances of election administration until becoming the supervisor of elections almost five years ago. This was in, well, this is all. Um, so 
think about that. When you put someone in a role, you know, if they've never done it before, all you have to bet on is whether they're going to listen to you and take your concerns seriously. So just think about that when you make your vote. And anything you want to ask us about, please stop. Bye. Sure. We're, yeah, we're going to have a question and answer period. That we, we've got another se section right now. We've got three candidates to speak. And, and then we'll open it up to question. If you could save your question, All right. that, that would be great. Let's give these ladies the election and <laughs> That's Sue Perry. That's June Lang. That's Diane Bonetta and Mary Bonetta. Let's give them a hand. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right, our program continues. We have uh, 30 minutes. We're going to allow for three candidates. That's 10 minutes each. We have three candidates, and they can do with, with that 10 minutes what they want. Anybody wants to sing and dance? <laughs> Whatever it is. That, now's the time. Come on, Becky, let's do it. So, so our, our, our first contestant is my, my good friend, my good friend, Mike, Mike Levine. Mike Levine. Come talk to you. What an interesting evening it's been so far already. So I just want to start by saying that I just have the highest respect for Andy. the Lake County Election Integrity and Voter Protection Coalition. These ladies have done an amazing uh, job. And I just want to just jump right into it since we only have 10 minutes. And, and I really thought that my conversation was going to be different than it actually is uh, going to be. Because, because of Andy uh, and Marie, they're very involved with an organization called the Republican Liberty Caucus. So I've been, you know, with the time that I have, I was the chairman of the party here, and I've been involved in a lot of different organizations over the years. And um, But because I had such a great respect for the Republican Liberty Caucus, I became mildly involved uh, based on my, just my time restrictions. So a year, uh, last year, even in the winter of last year, the Republican Liberty Caucus had a national convention over in the Melbourne area. So I went over, and uh, there were four state representatives on a panel over there. And um, after covering a lot of material about politics and stuff like that, we inter uh, you know, did just a Q&A with these um, state representatives. And um, Representative Bernie Jocks from over in the Pinellas area made a comment that he was actually writing an election reform bill. And um, I said, uh, I asked him about it, and he said, well, um, why don't you come over to my office in Pinellas, and we'll talk about what should be in that bill. Great. So uh, you know, Governor DeSantis had just written the um, Senate, I think Senate Bill 7050 was the reform bill that he was very interested in getting passed because he wanted to run for president. He didn't want to resign from being the governor. So at that particular time, uh, previous to 7050, uh, there was a law in Florida called the Resign to Run Law. So um, Governor DeSantis um, was able to get the legislature to pass Senate Bill 7050, which gave him the ability to run for president and remain the governor of the state of Florida. Um, but that wasn't the only change that was made. The fact of the matter is, uh, Senator Ford Bird, and I want to watch my time here. Anybody use the timer? You, you got seven minutes. Okay, great. So, uh, <laughs> You know, the election reform bill began in the Secretary of State's office because the Secretary of State supervises the elections. But eventually, it, started, it actually came out of the governor's office. The governor said, you know what, I think we're going to do this, and uh, his office wrote the bill. And then it was, uh, again, you can look at the various different ways in which bills are submitted for filing and everything, but this was a committee-sponsored bill, which means it kind of cuts through all the stuff with the state representatives and all that. You didn't have a specific state representative uh, sponsoring that particular bill that came out of committee. So uh, long story short, in uh, preparation to go meet with uh, Representative Bernie Jocks, I read the bill, of course, right? And I was pretty blown away. Um, and I just really wanted to segue over to what June was saying as she was putting up on the screen all of these various organizations that go to conventions. And, um, you know, that is a, a lifestyle, by the way, okay? <laughs> That's what it is. And I'm a real estate broker, so I get it, because the realtors do it too. Right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I just want to start by saying that um, 
these are these these are bureaucracies, is what they are. Okay, and in most bureaucracies, you got a couple of people at the top that are telling everybody else what to do. And uh, that's what, what I found as I was reading through the law. I discovered that because the point I'm going to make right now is that in Tallahassee, laws are written in order to pave the way and protect bad behavior. Let me give you an example. So in the law, it actually said that the Secretary of State's office was allowed to participate with non-governmental organizations and with certain criteria if they were if they were going to uh, if they were going to be uh, participate with a non-governmental organization, then the representative from the Secretary of State's office had to be on the board of directors, and uh, they could they could participate for one year before achieving a directorship on that NGO, and uh, after that, and, and, but they were free to share confidential information. Okay, so why did the Florida Legislature? right into SB 7050 that the Secretary of State and his people were allowed under the law to participate in NGOs. Why were they not allowed before? And once they have checked their boxes on their level of um, authority and um, influence over those organizations, then they are in the law today authorized to share confidential board rule information with non-governmental organizations. For me, totally wrong. Uh, you, we should never do this. your vote, okay? So for me, and I'm, I'm running for the Florida House of Representatives, okay? And I'm telling you that this is inconvenient for me to do that, <laughs> okay? Okay? But the fact of the matter is, it is a mandatory obligation that I have to humanity and my kids to go fight this battle. We are writing laws that are protecting bad behavior. And that is the norm, not the exception. And we can go through many, many, many examples, and we will. Okay? Um, but just as an election pitch, this is why you need to elect me to go to Tallahassee. Because I'm the only one, certainly in my race, okay? <laughs> certainly in my race. I'm the only one that's going to go make this case. Those of you who know me know that. This is just uh, what I do. I've always done it when I was the realtor that I did it uh, in the Lake County Republican Executive Committee and the Republican Party of Florida. I always did it, and I'm going to continue to do it because we have to shed light on truth. And we have to be true to, um, as my friend Chuck Benoit says, natural law and uh, the laws of nature and nature's God, right? Because that's what we have to do. That's what it's about. That's what America is about. So uh, when I went down to um, uh, Representative Jock's office, uh, first of all, uh, I also had for many, for a long time, uh, have been advocating that we need to ban the outsourcing of vertebral management. Just ban it. What do we pay you guys for? You know, you need to be qualified and competent in managing the vertebral. The, uh, the next thing would also become that we know that uh, these ladies just explained to us with the VR system situation. So we also need to remember that they outsource the printing of the ballots. Okay? So now we have a not we have a private sector organization who takes possession of our voter rolls, and then we also have three out of all 67, keep in mind, all 67 supervisor of elections outsourced to VR systems. All 67 out of 67 in lockstep outsourced to VR systems. Now there's three companies that print the ballots in Florida, right? And one of the companies prints like 75% of the ballots, and the other 25% is split between the other two companies. So not only do they print the ballots, but they mail the ballots, okay? So the Supervisor of Elections Office does not mail absentee ballots to voters, okay? Um, the, the printing house does. So is there a, and again, for me personally, the point I'm making to you is that your vote is more important than your money, okay? Because I'm telling you that I'm going to Tallahassee to defend your vote and a bunch of other stuff, right? And it's more important than your money. So is it possible that there could possibly be collusion between the company that manages the voter rolls and the company that puts the ballots and the company that mails the ballots? So, so I went over and met with Bernie Jocks, and I, 
and I just shared these things with Bernie. Bernie's a lawyer, and he, he's a great guy. Okay, he's got a great heart, he's very good intentioned. He filed House Bill 359, which was just, just minuscule compared to the problem. Okay? It was minuscule compared to the problem. But the, the, the Speaker of the House and the President of the Florida Senate would not allow any election reform bills to come to the floor. Period. So this is a problem. And I'm going to say to you too that I have other issues not, that are not associated with election integrity that I am <coughs> extraordinarily concerned about. I'm talking about fundamental stuff that our government's doing that it shouldn't be doing. Okay? And at the end of the day, I am not willing to believe that 40 out of 40 state senators all believe in the things that they're voting for or in some cases against. Okay, but typically for, right? I mean, if a bill doesn't come, if a bill comes to the floor, it's because it was allowed to come to the floor. So um, keeping in mind, there's three, you know, you, the, the president of the Senate determines, yes or no, whether a bill comes to the floor or not. The Speaker of the House determines, yes or no, whether a bill comes to the floor of the House or not. So I don't believe that 40 out of 40 senators vote for bad legislation. I don't believe they all are either naive or corrupt or anything. I believe that they are um, influenced. I mean, since I'm on camera, <laughs> right? Well, I use the word influence. Okay. Gentle word, influence, right? Um, so this is very heavy handed stuff. And again, um, I'm looking at legislation, this really bad legislation that passed in Florida House, 106 to 6. 106 to 6 in a Republican majority House. So don't, I don't believe that 106 uh, state representatives are all in favor of obviously bad legislation. So why is this happening? So I'd like to just close by saying that the um, bureaucracies that June brought to our attention this evening are all run the same way. So we go to the party, we go out for dinner, we hobnob, you know, we have a little intellectual uh, bantering or back and forth so that we all feel good about ourselves. And then we just go home and do whatever the organization wants to do. And that's the way that the country is being run right now. It's been run this way for a long time. So our non-governmental organizations interacting with our government organizations is literally, if you want to boil it down to a short sentence, it's called special interest, right? So what's going on is that the grassroots, like us, are not a part of the equation. We're not a part of the equation. The legislature in the state of Florida does what's good for the government of the state of Florida. Government, employees, and officials of the state of Florida and special addresses. And we have to put a light on this. We can win respectfully because that's the only way it's going to be done. We're not going to be able to go up there and scream and yell and jump up and down. It's not going to get the job done. We have to do a lot of study, a lot of work like the uh, voter integrity people here have done for years. And it's a slow process. It takes a long time to get legislation passed. It doesn't happen in one legislative session. So it's a lot of work. It can be done if we all pray about it and uh, stay vigilant about it, understand what our American founding values are, cling to those values, and uh, continue to press on regardless. And eventually, we will win this. Thank you. Florida House District 26. Right, our next candidate is Becky Ciroli. What district? 27. House District 27. House District 27. House District 27. Becky, Becky Ciroli is coming up. She's going to have 10 minutes. Okay. Remember, we're going to have questions at, uh, at, at the end of our program from the audience. So please, please save your questions. And real quick, I'm going to do a drawing. Two names for Becky Muggs. Oh. Give, her, give her the microphone. Okay. So, Use the microphone. Oh. Virginia, Bella, is it? Oh, okay. Okay. Superior. That would be rich. Superior. It won't be because this is Superior. Marie Dubois. Oh! 
fix, fix. <laughs> to enforce the laws. And the administration, backed by the unit party, 
Letty had said, Mike had said, blocks legislation that will actually secure our elections. We can't get it passed. Just to be clear, we've been working since early 2021 on this. To this date, we have never been able to verify that Florida's elections are truly the gold standard. Nearly every single Florida supervisors of election, supervisor of elections, and there are 67 of them, they have blocked access to public records, either through exemptions that are unlawful, or ignoring us, or giving us quotes for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Our highest quote was half a million dollars to obtain records. Can you imagine that phone call? Hey, honey, I need to get a loan for half a million dollars for a house? No, for public records. That won't go over very well. So um, they also cite trade secrets and critical infrastructure. Um, all of it is a violation of law. Um, Polk County, I took the supervisor of elections to court for a violation of public records laws. I did it in August. I, I did my first public records request in August of 2022, ahead of the September 2022 schedule for the ballots to be destroyed. The 22 months was up. So, they ignored me for two months. I had to keep asking if they'd got my, record, uh, my public records request. But they finally responded two months later with a, an estimate of $14,000 to inspect ballots. Okay, that's fine. That's for almost 700,000 ballot pages because each ballot had two pages. So I, I modified my request and said, what about one or two precincts? They ignored me again for two months, finally sent me a quote for $22,000. $8,000 more than the original request. request. Um, but wait, there's more. So I, I ended up taking them to court in February of, what was last year, 23. All right, I've been battling them since with this ever since in court. I just found out this week that it was not 14,000 or 22,000, it was both. $14,000 for the supervision and $22,000 to sort the ballots that they've already certified through the state. They certified that all the ballots were already sorted before they were stored waiting for retention. So, before I filed a court though, I didn't want to take a supervisor of election or any elected official to court, okay? Especially since I'm cop-minded, not attorney-minded. So I called the Attorney General's Mediation Program. Took forever, but I got a call back. The guy asked me, he sounded really nice. He said, how can I help you? And I was explaining to him, and I said, my biggest concern is he cut me off and said, I don't care what your concerns are. I have 100 or 270 more people to call. Needless to say, it took so long for him to call back, I'd already filed um, my petition in court. I also contacted Governor's Election Crimes and Security Unit because I, I had found evidence that there were crimes that have allegedly crimes had been committed based on my research. It, it took them forever to call back, but they did um, email me back two more minutes and said um, nothing to see. <coughs> so when all off spells, I took bail, I took them to court, I've been battling, me acting pro se, and the supervisor of election has two law firms representing her. So yesterday was one of the um, latest in a long line of hearings the defendants um, had filed for a motion for summary judgment. The judge ruled yesterday in favor for the defendant. He denied that I had proved every single aspect of my case in spite of documentation, and he denied it because of a technicality. I did speak to an attorney last night because I was gonna fight it, they weren't getting away with it, but the attorney looked at my documentation and said that I had made a rookie mistake it was a technical error. It's too long to get into, but it was unrecoverable. So, a side note, until this time, all the 2020 ballots were being preserved in Polk County. It was the only county in the entire state that had them preserved. Because my case was lost on a technicality, those ballots will be destroyed. I was worried about precedent being set, that all the supervisors could use that now and block access and with impunity. And it's, he said that not to worry about that, that my case was good, it was a technicality. But we can't allow that precedent, precedent to, set, um, to stand, and we can't ever stop backing down. Without public oversight, we will never be able to verify that our elections are actually fair and lawful. Without fair and lawful elections, we don't have a country. 
And this is why we have to elect America first representatives like like Mike like Mike like like Mike Levine. I am uncaffeinated too, and me who will fight to pass solid election integrity laws in Florida's House to with measures to ensure compliance. And election supervisors like Tom Dale who will make sure Lake County's elections are truly secure. Or we continue with the same selected, not elected government that's by and for the radical progressives and the special in interest groups and not the people. Is that my time? Perfect. I was not exaggerating when I said it was not a public speaker. It's not my superpower. <laughs> Becky Sorelli. 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 Florida House District 27. Yes. 27. 27. Vote Becky.com. Vote Becky.com. I like Becky. I like Mike. <laughs> All right. Our next, our next guy is uh, probably someone that you know. I see some of his T-shirts in the room. <laughs> My dear friend, Tom Bale. Welcome, welcome, Tom. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming here tonight. I want to start with one word, disinformation. Everybody's heard that word, right? I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and I'm sure most of you here can remember back that far. That word to me means Soviet Union. Disinformation is the word that, to me, it's, it's used by tyrants, by authoritarians, by communists, trying to stifle dissent. Am I right? Do you all agree with that? Yes. 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 Have, have you seen censorship? In our country, can you believe it's happening? It's shocking to me. I didn't think I would ever see that. So, I've been working with this group here, these four ladies, and they just skimmed the surface. Did you all hear things you've never heard before? They skimmed the They could talk, each of them, for an hour or two on all that they know about this. And, and I, I could talk for an hour or two also, and I don't know the details that they know. But I want to raise one point, and it started with June here. She went through all those organizations up on the screen. Those were all leftist organizations, and, and they're related to a couple of national organizations of elected officials. And the point of that is all these leftist organizations are pushing legislation across the country, every state, to be more favorable to Democrat candidates, to leftist candidates, to make the elections more secure, more open to cheating. Everybody remember 2020? Okay, mail-in ballots everywhere. There were so many mail-in ballots, they were in dumpsters. We don't have that in Florida, but it's not the gold standard. Our state legislature has done a few good things. They've, they've tightened up on how third-party voter registration works because the Democrats were going nuts and registering anybody and everybody. But they made it harder for us, the Republicans, to get registrations. It's a difficult process, which is good. It's good. But this is part of the problem. The leftists ruin everything. And I'm not saying Democrats, leftists. The leftists are pushing the Democrats and the Democrats are letting them. But at the same time, the Republicans are letting this happen too. Because Republicans put, put a stop to it, especially here in Florida. We've got a majority in the House, and the Senate, they can do whatever they want. And that tells you they are doing what they want. Mm -hmm. yep. They don't want to fix this. It needs to be fixed, and it takes citizens to do that. <clears throat> so this event here tonight was to help everybody see what's going on and to kind of tie it together with candidates, people that actually want to get into office and make a serious change. This is the big problem we have. In this county here, we're lucky in this county, Taylor Yarkoski, District 25 in the South, Mike Levine, a candidate now for the center part of the county, and Becky Ciroli for the north part of the county. Three people that are interested in improving electional law in this county. Three out of three. I don't know if it's that good anywhere else. I don't think it could be. If I'm in, I expect to win, I'll be in the Office of Supervisors of Elections. I'll be going to Tallahassee and say, Look, I know what we can do. I know how we can do it. I've been looking at the voter registration rolls. Okay, we all remember Chicago, dead people voting. 
can't happen in Florida, right? Sure. Okay, so I'm going around to different houses, door to door, meeting voters, and just yesterday, I go to a house and I say, there's a Rhode Island license plate in the driveway, and I introduce myself, and I say, are, are you this guy on my list? Nope, I bought this house three years ago. That guy died. He's still on the voter registration. Same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. I go to another house. It's a woman, a minority. I'm thinking, this is probably not a Republican. So I ask, do you vote? Yeah. Do you vote Republican? No. Well, this, this person here is on my list as a Republican at this address. Oh, they moved away from here three years ago. What's going on here? Okay. That's what's happening in this county. I did some research in another county. I found a person who was dead 20 years still on the voter registration rolls. Okay, it's got to be cleaned up. I could go on that topic for a while too. But I want to raise another issue that was skimmed over here. Florida Supervisors of Elections, a private association. They do a lot of things. One of them is lobbying the state legislature for election law. This is their published agenda, legislative agenda for 2023, or 2024 rather, this past session. Exempt election workers can be verified. Do you know what E-Verify is? It's an electronic system that you can put somebody's name and social security number in to find out if they're a citizen or a green card holder eligible to work. Why would you not want to do that? Only one reason I can think of is you want illegal aliens as election workers. Does that make any sense to anybody? Number one on this list is protected election workers from harassment. You heard a little bit about that. But it goes back to my first point. <clears throat> Protect election workers from harassment. This is about censorship. It's about stifling the voices of people asking questions. Don't bother me. This is my office. Leave me alone. Don't ask me questions. Don't harass me. <clears throat> it's it's a, an ambiguous law that could be misused very easily. And even if it's not, they want you to silence yourself. Keep your mouth shut. Don't ask questions. Don't bother us. We've got this under control. You don't need to get involved. There's a few more points here. In the back there, I've got some copies of this. There's also a poster with a large version of it. But it's something that we need to pay attention to. It's got to be changed. How am I doing on time? I don't you know. Got, you got over three minutes, man. Three minutes to go? You got over three, three minutes and 40 seconds. All right. So... <laughs> I, I plan to get into this office to do a little bit better here in Lake County. Not that Lake County is terrible, but it can be approved. Okay, the voter registration rules are one thing easy to fix. There's a lot of big problems that can be fixed very easily, and nobody's doing it. And it's not just in this county, it's the whole state. Uh, but I've just been looking at this county, so I know the problems are here. <coughs> Some of the problems. But in addition to working in this county, I'll be working with the state legislature. I've been doing that in the past. As an elected representative or, or supervisor of elections, I'll have a lot more clout, a lot more credibility. And if I have a few other candidates elected that support better elections, we might be able to get something good done in Tallahassee next year. Um, let's see, did I cover everything I want to cover? Yeah, okay. So I've got a card at the back for me. I'm running for supervisor of elections here in Lake County, of course. Three points that I'm aiming for, one day voting, okay? Back in the old days, that's what we did. Limit absentee ballots. If you can't get there, you get an excuse, you get an absentee ballot, not a mail ballot to anybody that just doesn't feel like going and standing in line. And hand count the ballots. This is the only way, the only way that everybody can be sure that these ballots are counted accurately. We don't know what goes on in the machines. There's no way to check it. A lot of people think that the government is looking at the code. They do a test, but we really don't know for sure. And I've got evidence at the back that shows some questionable output. Long, long story. I'm not going to get into it. I've got a second card here. It's got 31 points, how we can make our elections better. And it's nothing new. It's what we used to do. It's all common sense. But there's a website here. Uh, www.tomselectionnews.com There's some articles that go back 20, 30 years to talk about election fraud. This is nothing new. Oh, there is one other thing I want to cover. 
Do I have another minute? Yeah, you got 128. Okay. Eric. Somebody mentioned Eric, and, and I think Mike Levine mentioned some of the legislation. Eric, Electronic Registration and Information Center. This is an organization, a private organization, that's made up of state election directors. In our state, we got out of this last year. It's basically a contract. It's not legislation. So we can in and out just like that. And the point is, we're out now. We can be back in tomorrow. Actually, we could be back in right now. We just don't know it. Because the legislation that allows that, like Mike Levine said, it's still on the books. What, they, what Eric did, it was touted as a way to get ineligible voters off voter registration rolls. So on their website, I think the report was like three, four years ago. Um, but I got the information. I didn't bring it with me to show you tonight. But they got 8 million, 8 million invalid registrations off the voter rolls in about a six or eight year period. No applause? Okay. In that same period, they added 24 million. Why did they do that? Because part of the contract with the state is you have to send a mailer out at taxpayer expense, of course, to, in a, uh, to eligible voters who are not registered. And who are they? People that don't care. They don't care if they vote or not. They don't think their vote matters. So those are the people who would be easy to say, here, vote for me. Just mail it in. Okay, so I see the hook coming over here to grab me. Um, one last request, if you could, if you haven't done this, I need some more signatures to get on the ballot. And I'm done. Thank you very much. Q&A section. Why don't, why don't we get the uh, candidates up here? We're going to get the candidates up here. I'd like to get the EIVPC crew up here. And we're going to... Can we stand or sit? Uh, whatever you want to do, just so everybody can see you and hear you. Uh, should we pass the mic? Probably the best idea. Now, we don't have a mic for the audience. Yeah, we, we don't have a mic for the audience, so what I'd like to do is when you are asked a question, re repeat the question Tom, so, so that everybody can hear it. Okay. And uh, who, who am I going to start with? Uh, how about Mike? Mike, train you with a note. All right. First of all, uh, I do both voter registration. I do that at my church, I do that at Haynes Creek Garage, and I do that at Peterson's Gun Shop. And I'm also a poll worker. I work as an inspector, and I have for the past two years. So two um, clarifications. The one thing, the, the biggest number you threw out there was 68,000 voters being deemed inactive. Inactive is a totally benign uh, denominator. If a voter comes to me and it says they're inactive, I let them vote. All it means is they have haven't a question. voted in the past two years. That's all. The other uh, qualifier, you uh, made a, a point that illegal aliens might be poll workers. You are required to be a registered voter to be a poll worker. So that would eliminate the illegal aliens. Now, my question yeah. is this. I admire you guys. You work real hard, and this is the election integrity. You work real hard at what you do, and, and I wouldn't have the energy to work. But it's been three years. Across the nation, a hundred million dollars has been spent. Mike, do you have a question? Yeah. Where sure. are the documented fraudulent votes? I've never seen There's one. There's a Georgia case right That's now. That's my question. That's not a question. It is a it's question. A where's, the, where's the fraudulent okay. books? That's enough. <laughs> okay, sir. Hi, I'm Keith Breedlove. I'm from Groveland. I don't have a question. I have some comments to make. There are some, what I think are some red herrings thrown out there, uh, ladies. Uh, I too. Uh, this is the point here. We're making a presentation. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, well, wait a minute. We're wait. asking questions. Would you wait. like to answer? Okay, sure, I'll ask Give a, a question. I'll, okay, I'll ask a question. Thank you. How much voter information is available? 
I know I have it. Okay? I have voter information on disks that I got from the Secretary of State on this a monthly basis a going back. The way I, I, I led off with a question, I'm giving you some background. Okay? I don't want to be censored, please. Okay? Um, somebody voted, and I can't vote because they did. What was the voter code that was used? How did they vote? Was it mail-in? Was it in person, was it early voting or whatever? That data is out there. Um, and and voter, voter focus, all right, is an application. I assume that's the application that when you go to lakevotes.com to register, that's what it is. Everything that goes in there that you put in there is going to show that voter focus did it, okay? It's not necessarily a staff member. If you call the uh, supervisor of elections office to make a change, their staffer may make the yes. change for you. Yes. Okay. And as far as voter ID goes, all right, now we have the, what do they call them, the vids, all right, that's all electronic. You have to show your photo, you have to show a signature, and then you have to sign the electric pad, which is frankly a pain, all right. But that gets compared. Now, none of us poll workers are experts in signature analysis. So, you know, you do the best you can, and so forth. So, people are identified. Um, and hand counts. I'm, 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 just a second. Let me. I'm, I'm on a roll. Well, I'm, I know you'd like I'm to on, answer, I'm, this I'm is on a not roll. a debate. Oh, okay, I know it's not. I know it's not. I don't want. Here I don't want. You're here to listen to our presentation, not make your presentation. Okay? Unless I think you're here. wrong. Unless I put, think you're putting out desinformatia. We're trying to answer questions, and you're not giving us a question. Oh, okay. Why is hand counting so good? Why is hand counting so good? Please answer that. You were pushing. Because, like you hand said, counting. the method of voting is shown in the voter records. Mm -hmm. When we go knock on doors and I ask you, mm -hmm. John Doe, how did you vote in the last election? Was it early at the polls or absentee? Mm -hmm. My record shows you mm -hmm. showed up at the polls, but you yep. told me that you voted early. That's incorrect. That's an inconsistency. Okay. How did that happen? Okay. That tells us that something is being manipulated in the background, no, not necessarily. unbeknownst to you. No, no not, ne not necessarily. Oh, in the last, but, in just a second, in the last election, in the last election, I was an inspector, regist uh, not registering people, taking people in, checking them against the vid, their data, and so forth. And it, somebody, several people came in, and they popped up as having already voted, you know, turned in their, wait a minute, sent back their um, mail-in ballot. And they had forgotten that they had done it because those came out. How, how far? No. No, no, no. More all right, all right. Than that. That's it. You sit down. Okay, we're going to go to another I'm, question. Thank you. I'm being censored. Hold your, hold your own we'll, event. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. Personally, we'll get back to you. personally, I'd love to hear all of your comments, but let me right. just answer a couple of your questions. Okay. Yeah, sure. I have a million one offs. I have a million. I was a poll worker as well, did uh, in the. Uh, um, tabulator thing, the inspector, voting sure. systems inspector. Okay, I worked on campaigns, I've handled the door knocking, I've seen the data, I've seen where people are deceased in an address. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. That comes out of the voter rolls. Everything we've looked at came from the legislative copy. We get it monthly, we look at changes. We could probably share a lot of information. I'm glad you're looking at all of that. That's really important. We have uh, all kinds of data. I'd love to sit down and talk with you about it. But I will tell you, I have a million one-off stories as well. I know people who forgot. I know all of those things. However, we are finding factual information. And I'm not going to go into my gut. I'd love to talk with you after, too. There are cases of, you know, you want to talk about what's happening in the nation. We're not going there. We're going to talk about what's happening in Florida with specifics. Okay? Love to talk to you about it. Um, hand counting. You can't tell what's going on in the machine. I don't care what your background is on, on uh, computer science or anything. You can't see what's happening in the machine. Your ballot is a secret ballot. It's a secret from you. 
you can't ever see how you voted, who you voted for. You can, you can see that category of, I voted by mail, I voted in person, your method of voting, you don't know how your vote was counted. You'll never know. The same thing goes I with that. I just have a quick point. You had mentioned that you get the data from the state. We've also gotten the data from the state for years and years. We know for a fact that that data is only a subset from the county level's data. We get audit logs from the supervisors of elections when we can. The volumes of information on those that they do not share with the state. You're getting the state disks is nothing compared to the, okay. the county I'm, level. I'm not, I'm not also, also, I have also done, been door knocking, even more so canvassing. You go to a house, seven people on your list from the state, and none of those people live there, and there's two different residents living there. And don't even get me started on signature verification. And those people voted. And those right. people voted. People signature vote. verification. I did signature verification. I challenged one. The name was spelled wrong, and the, it was a completely different signature, and the supervisor of election and the canvassing board accepted that. So there's many, many issues. Yep. And, and one last thing, your supervisor, like, well, Lake County supervisor of election, we asked, what was the setting for signature verification yeah. on the machine? He said, I don't know. The vendor sets it. That's a problem. That's his job. You know, so so there are problems with, with the process as well. But you know, signature verification, it'd be great if it works. You're signing on a keypad, you do that at Publix, it's nothing like your signature. You know, so the comparisons are iffy at best. We have a question. Rick, 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 put his hand up early on. Question, question, Rick, question. <laughs> no no comments, question. Well, okay, I'm gonna ask the question and then I have a <laughs> what, what we can do to secure our elections between now and uh, now in November, what it is that what we can do. But I, August. I have to say, it outside of, I just got to say, there's a supervisor's meeting with regards to our resolution it, it, that we're going to, a commissioner's meeting, and I just got to say, it, Andy, yeah. I'm going to go to the commissioner's meeting on, and I'm going to try uh, demand that the FSE money be pulled. That, that, that's going to our SOEs because it's a non governmental organization. Rick, you have a question. Lobby. So if there's a meeting this Wednesday. Rick, I, question, please. I wanted to try to get people to go to the meeting. So, Mike, <laughs> <my, my, my laughs> <laughs> you to go to the meeting. Go to the meeting. When is the meeting? Wednesday morning is or Tuesday morning. Huh? Yeah, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday morning, the BCC chamber. Yes. Okay. How many people want to go? We got one. I'll go. I'll go. Well, there's three back there. There we go. There we go. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. This lady, this lady over Thank here. Thank you. Is, and I have a question. Go for these guys. My question <laughs> pertains to the election we just had about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, sometime very recently. I got up at the, on that Tuesday. I didn't make it to the poll until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was at one of the larger polls in Leesburg. And I was number 25. I was the 25th voter in there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. What are you going to do to fix that if you're a supervisor of election? Voter apathy? Yeah. Well, voter apathy is a problem. But I had a number of people address me that day on that same issue. We didn't know ridiculous. there was an election. I don't know. The Republican Party should do a better job informing people. The supervisor of elections should do a better job. If I was in the office, I would do as much as I could do with, with social media. And My polling anything. place is the gymnasium at Carver Middle School. It's That's the same problem the across the county. It's, it's the whole county was like that. It's ridiculous. It is. I agree. <laughs> the presidential Any ballot? other questions? That's a known Mike, outcome. Mike, you that? Yeah, I just want to say that, uh, I, again, as uh, serving as the chairman of the Lake County Republican Party in 2012 2016, I'm just going to tell you straight up that elections are political. So, for example, <laughs> if you ask, you know, why did the supervisor of elections not make a bigger deal about the presidential preference primary on March the 19th, uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that. But so uh, the Republican, 
uh, I can speak to the Republican Party that makes decisions on whether or not it's in the party's interest to turn out voters or not. I mean, that's just the way it is. And the supervisor of elections could have the same thing. It could be all over the state. And keep in mind that they do march in lockstep. You've never seen a supervisor of elections disagree with another supervisor of elections. Okay, that hasn't happened. Anybody? Right? I've never seen it. So the point is that the supervisors of elections marching in lockstep could very well decide that they're not interested in turning out the vote. And not to mention, in fact, I would suggest it's not their job necessarily to turn out the vote. But I will tell you that in, the, in, in Florida politics, there is a decision made by both parties and the other parties of whether they want to turn out the vote or not. So this is just, that, that is a political factor that is directly related to the question you asked. You asked. Is there any other questions? Okay, right in. Um, I just have a very simple question, but I've asked this so many times and I get different answers every time. How are the votes transmitted from the ESNS DS200 tabulator to the central office? <laughs> Mary! How? I worked on the voting system <laughs> inspector job. Did Mary, my guy, use the mic. So, um, I don't know if you guys did voting systems inspector, if that's what you did as co workers. You have a thumb drive? When you start out with the machines at the beginning of the day, you have to make sure that everything is ready to go. By the end of the night, it gets uploaded. Not, it, it's on the disk, but it gets sent. How do you think results come out so quickly? I it's, it wasn't connected to the internet, though. It, it's a magic it's a phone. channel. It's a modem. It's a, it's, a, it's a magic channel that has no way to get hacked, even though yeah, CISO, the agency yeah, that runs product. it, that, that has been hacked. The Department of Energy has been hacked. Pretty big The Department of Defense has been hacked. So I don't know computers, so but I will say one thing. Is the machine networking the machine? No, the machines are not networked. Well, the they're not networked. Not they're not networked, but they run on the internet. No, they don't. Okay. No, it's okay. So you can talk to him totally, about totally this specific. It's over a However, phone system. It is fizz from but it still was over the internet. polling station to someone at the, at the main SME's office. They know the answer before they get the little thumb drive and the little piece of paper that says so many people voted. So I'll let you you computer people discuss that. But I will check the e-poll books 100% all the time online. Because that's how they know if you went to Claremont and voted in the morning and you went to Barry's and voted in the afternoon. They have real time who walked in and voted. But that's not vote counting. We're not, you know, you're picking broad categories, but we're not talking about that. We'll talk after. Okay, so let's just talk about this. Let me see if I can find some uh, commonality here. But at the end of the day, uh, and I believe uh, our supervisor of elections actually has on his website that voter confidence is required. And uh, we had a, we just had a show of the hands a moment ago. How many people think the 2020 election was stolen? I'm suggesting to you that there has not been. I mean, yes, 70-50 did uh, some good things. I think we all agree that it did some good things to tighten up the database. But I'm just saying to you, if I'm a supervisor of elections, I understand that it's my responsibility to advance voter confidence. And obviously, there's, there's a significant portion of the, of the electors in Lake County, Florida, that are not comfortable with what's going on. And I'm suggesting to you, all the counties, look, we've done this all over the state and all over the nation, and we all know, anybody that keeps up with uh, any type of uh, information distribution, news, you might call it, although it's not sure it's news anymore, but the long story short is that voters are not, there's a significant portion of American registered voters who are not um, confident in the accuracy of the elections. So it is the job of the supervisors of elections to achieve voter confidence. And the 67 supervisors of elections in Florida are not addressing it. Thank you. I have a question. Wait, How do you do that? There we go. Right here. Yes. I heard numerous mentions to green card voters. My wife is a resident alien. She's been in this country since 1967. She retired from the Lake County government. Is she an eligible voter or or is a resident alien an eligible voter in the state of florida it, it, their comments are on that blue and yellow board right there you have to be a citizen 
of the United States. You have to be a resident of Florida. You have to be a resident of the county. And just to clarify on residency, there, there is that discussion of it's not defined in law. However, it is. <laughs> Sorry, it is what it's not. But, but it does say you have to have a physical presence in Florida. Your, your home is your, your a fixed abode where you do your daily living. Um, right. Lots of case precedents saying we do know what a house is and we do know when, it, when it's your residence. If you file for homestead exemption, anybody, did you have to prove your physical presence in Florida? You can't be living in an RV in Montana and say, I want my $25,000 exemption. You have to prove physical presence. What we're Mary, let me interrupt you on that, because that's a very good point. I talked to our tax appraiser here. He said, not only you have to prove that you're here, you have to prove that you're not somewhere else also. Right. And, and so, so that's the thing. We, we have laws. And, and honestly, this, is, this should be a common concern for everyone, whatever your opinion is about some of the other issues. Don't you want local people voting in your local elections? That's how yes. school boards get you know, filled up with nuts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my that's, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Locals my like opinion. you voted for them. It sure looks like they're nuts. So, <laughs> so we want local people in local elections. That second board right there, all these people live in a campground. And isn't this weird? Their mailing address, all of the people, 3,600 people, live in a campground that doesn't accept mail. They've told us, we don't accept mail for people. This is not your residence. Every one of them, their mailing address is the same street in Texas. Is that not weird? Mail boarding service is that not weird? in Texas. I yes. Question. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we need to do a better job at, at giving the right venue for people in Montreal. Barry, we got a question over here. Go ahead. On voter, uh, I mean, on signature verification, I asked this question, and it's a question to the supervisor of election because I was concerned about my elderly aunt, 95 years old. Her signature has changed, and she doesn't sign hers like she did when she first read something. And I was asking him, what do you do about that? I, I, I even made a template for her to sign into this thing. I didn't get a good, I said, what do you do about people like this? There's so many in the state of Florida that their signatures have changed. Will they be thrown out? Now, you, what, what's good to do, even if you've broken your arm or whatever, they want you to update your signature. So you would take one of the voter registration forms, and there's an option to update the signature on it. Everything else is the same. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then so, so, that. so would I, would I be in a, in a, a wrong by taking them to her place where she lives? There's a hundred residents no, there, you, you and ask that. them if they could want to update their voter. You mean everyone or just your aunt? Every, every what? Everyone in the facility or just your aunt? Well, my aunt lives in a, in a facility that has a. Yeah, uh, you can do your you can do your aunts. I would be concerned myself about doing both registration. I, yeah, but if you want your aunt, that's that's fine to do. Bring her the form. She signs it. You can bring it. Well, that's going to be a problem because there's not a city. But you, you can give a form to anybody, yeah. but they'd have to get it back to the well, yeah. election. I mean, you couldn't do that for them. Right, you give the form yeah. stuff, yeah. and then they'll get it back. Yeah. And you can go to the supervisor elections office and ask for it. They're required to give it to you for free. Mm -hmm. You can also call the supervisors of elections office and ask if they will please send a person from their office yes. during office hours to the facility to facilitate what you're asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Anybody? Yes, yeah, I have two questions. One, if I call up any of you guys that are running for office and want some information, will you tell me to go sit down and shut up or will you talk to them? Or will you talk to them? What? We have to talk to you. We have to that's not always the it's not always because the people aren't being represented. When you put an Ameri when you elect an America first candidate, it has to be an open line of communication. I've been door knocking as of others, and I I cannot believe how just absolutely surprised people are that a candidate's at their door. I've lived here 20 years. I've never had anybody at my door. And that has to change. I'm getting so addicted to listening to the people and knocking on doors that I'm going to keep doing it after I'm elected. Because we have to listen to the people. We have to be their voice. Everybody's been silenced for far too long, and that has to change. This lady in the white didn't try to ask the question. 
Did you have another question? Did you have another question? One more question. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like for you people that have done the hand counting technique to talk, address that issue that somebody asked. How can you Okay, say so hand counting. I know a lot of people don't believe in hand counting because there's too many people. Well, France doesn't. Uh, uh, France uses hand counting. There's a, there's a bunch of countries that use yep. hand counting for their ballots. We did it up until, what, 2020? So we have put together a video. If anyone wants to see it, we're happy to send it out. We did it in conjunction with Andy, and we went down to Sarasota. We refined the program. We have four people, two Dems, two Republicans, and we sit on opposite sides of the table. They read us the names so we know who is voting. We mark it on the little pad. If there's any discrepancy in the number of um, uh, tally votes, tally sheets. on the tally sheets, if there's any discrepancy, we know it right then. We did 50 ballots, no, 50 ballots in what, 45 minutes? With one mistake. So hand counting. And the mistake is able to be seen. It's right reconciled there. immediately. And yeah. people can watch. We don't have to stand 50 feet behind a window <laughs> that we can't see the signature verification. With a we mask. are right there looking at the ballot, and if there's a problem with the signature, or, well, we don't have it on the ballot, but if there's a problem with the signature, let's say somebody, instead of putting a little circle, they circle the whole name. Machines don't read that. People read that. So we, we count that for that person. Circle. If they're... Um, <laughs> The other thing, anyway, we can all oh, we can see it right there. So we did 50 ballots in 45 minutes. We've done it time and time and time again. And if you if you want to see it, we'll do it. I have no we have. Sue, can no I problem. interrupt you there? What they did was videotaped. There's there's two versions of this. There's a 45 minute version that shows the full process start to finish, and there's a short version about four minutes. There's links to them on my campaign website, so you can go home and look at it for yourself. What she said was four people at the table doing the counting. We can also have two observers watching that. And with our modern technology, we can put a video camera up above it, watch the whole process, have a permanent record of it, and even live stream it so people can watch it while it's happening. Right, and remember... Can anybody complain about that? The gold standard in Florida seems to only be related to how fast we get an answer out. Bingo. <laughs> We have no idea, but, but we're like, oh, we've got to get the answer out right now. Well, you know what? The next morning is fine. Three weeks, four weeks, however long yeah, well, some of these states win. Yeah. So you you said you only had 25 people at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We would have those counted in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. you know? So that's not a problem. We've got another question. Yeah. Yes, what, is, what is the process required to get to the point where we do have and hand counted ballots. I hear a lot of people talking about how we need to do it. Is it does it require legislation? Yes. yes. Okay. So it can't be done county by <coughs> county. It has to be done statewide well, and all counties do it or, or what? Act, actually, there was an election in Everglades City a few months ago yeah. where the SOE allowed a a small election to be hand counted. So there are some SOEs in the in the uh, state of Florida that can allow that to be done. And in this case, in Everglades City, they'd allowed it to be done in parallel to the machines. Okay. Right. Okay. They, they didn't do so, it in lieu of, but they did it in addition to. Right. And then we're we're talking about hand counting paper ballots at the precinct level. So they had an opportunity then to compare the results. Right. Yes. Two ways. Yes. That's were, what they, I like. were they the same? Within like two votes. Two okay. or three votes. And the hand county can actually perform better than a machine in the sense that a machine is programmed to pick up a dot in one spot. And we've seen ballots before where they're, they're still voters. They'll, they'll circle uh, the, the name. They rejected. They'll, they'll circle the R or the D or the whatever. And a, a human, human uh, interpretation of that. Can, can be reconciled on the spot. So that's that's one advantage that's over the top. I just want to make one point on this. Yes, hang on, hang on. Because Bernie Jock's House Bill 359 was a very simple bill. It said that the, that the supervisional elections were not allowed. The proposed bill that actually went through committee and then was, uh, then was um, not allowed to come to the floor for a vote 
said just two very simple things. The hardware and the software have to be manufactured in the United States. And number two is that um, hand, the paper ballots hand counted in the precincts has to be an option, an option for the supervisors of elections. So my point of bringing this up is because supervisors of elections are legally prohibited from paper ballots hand counted in the precincts under the Florida law now. Hmm. True. Wow. 359 was just going to fix that one little thing, and it wasn't allowed to come to the floor. Sorry, is that what you're asking? You're saying, what is your statement on the machines counting the votes? What is the problem there? We don't. We can't see in the machines. So, so if we, have, we can't see the machines. We can't see what they're what counting on inside. What? What? Well, we watch them all day long. I'm a poll worker. I'm a system. What are you watching? We're, we we right. watch the numbers count. You watch the numbers, but are the count votes being counted? You want to see somebody's vote? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. 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 Okay, no. So we don't is, watch. We don't see their votes. Right. The machine. And we don't want to see their vote. That. We yeah. want to ensure that if I go in um, in November and I cast a vote for Trump and it's fed into the machine and tallied and I get, I, I can verify that it was tallied, I don't know that it's actually being counted for Donald Trump and we've seen that time yep. and time again. How, how are you going to do that otherwise? No, no, no. So, you're going to count the vote yourself? No, Seriously? the problem is you have, they'll tell you in Florida that we have paper ballots. But if nobody ever looks at the paper ballots like they did in the one it. county, in the one precinct, you cannot reconcile it. There are data scientists that have looked at this. They've looked at what they call the cast vote records. That is basically the machines play by play by play of the entire election. And they're finding that there are changes within there, and they've actually identified an algorithm that is responsible. They can numerically tell you the math on how it's done. So they're finding the discrepancies in the machines. Now, are you allowed to go into the machine and verify what you found as evidentiary? No, because the Secretary of State and every state will not allow, they call it proprietary information. Well, it's our tax dollars, it's our information, we should be able to reconcile it. If you hand count them, real people like us can see, can verify, and can feel good and have confidence in the elections going It's forward. like Bitcoin versus cash. You can count your cash. I don't really know what Bitcoin is. I'll leave that to the computer. <laughs> but <laughs> our whole point is, is every election prior to 2002, was every election fraudulent? Every election prior to 2002, we used to count ballots. Well, were those all lies? Because we could see we have 100. And when you talk about the count of people that show up, Yes, that number, you put a ballot in, you want to see one more added to the tally, right? So you know that that ballot was accepted. <coughs> so a thousand people show up at a precinct, but somehow there's 1,200 votes out of that precinct? That's weird. I don't know how that happens that because happen. we have to verify no, all the numbers. Happen. Correct. We can, we, yes. And yes. at the end of the day, yeah. and we verify yeah. Yeah. with all the events, yeah. the numbers have to be the same if they are not. I agree. Right. I agree, because that's the same job I did. You talk to people at other publics, how many did you have? We had, you know, 1,700 people. I did too. Great. But then you have to add in, you know, all we're saying is there's transparency required in the law. If you want to pull the data that showed um, the precinct level results from an election, you're going to see, I think it was 50% of those results were blank. Blank. Whatever else you think. Why are they blank? They want to say, I don't understand. What's blank? I don't, I don't get you. Okay. The total number of votes so in you, that precinct. So you can pull a report that shows every precinct in Florida. Right. Okay. And it will say the vote total for every precinct based on the races, right? So if you have half of your precincts with no reporting numbers, you're never going to verify that total at the bottom, right? Let's say there were uh, 100,000 votes in Lake County. You're going to see the 100,000, but you're not going to be able to know how you got there. Think of it like your money. Would you want your bank account to look that way? You know, we're not saying everyone's a crook. We're not saying everyone has evil intent. But we are saying there's no reason we don't want transparency. Is there a problem? I mean, we hand counted forever. And those were, I guess, and I they not. I personally want to see votes tabulated and then hand counted. 
because yeah. I want a comparison. Right. Exactly. That's my personal preference. Le Leslie's got a question. Go ahead, Leslie. Question, right? Yes, it is a question. Okay. Uh, Lake County is a very, very conservative district. Right? Yes. Democrats have not won this district for years. Any of you know, any of you know the Demo Democratic Party president of Lake County? So, so, say it again, say it president again. President of the Democrat Party of Lake County. <coughs> the president? Of the Democrat Party? Yes. What about him? Do you know the name of the person? I don't know. Okay. The of the Democrats here? Well, they share. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is my point. Lake County. I mean, we are wasting Pardon. so much energy to investigate a, a, a Republicans, but you guys don't even know who the president of the Democrat Party. Do you know what they are doing to steal the elections? We are. They have you investigated Democrats? It's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, we're looking at the this is not about Republicans. This is about every person in this county who votes. <coughs> if you go look at the um, no community ties local elections, you're going to see Democrats on there. You're going to see Republicans. You're going to see Democrats. We don't look at the party when we're looking at the voter rolls. All I want to know is why this person, when I go knock on their door, she tells me she stood in line with her husband for two hours, and I look at the information on the voter roll, and it says for both of them, oh my, you didn't vote in this election. <coughs> you know, so, and she, to do, but, but, what but it's not party specific. What I'm trying to say is that you know, it, it's a Republican count. Right. And, and you are trying to find certain things that the Republicans do. No, no, no this, what we do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's what exactly what you're doing. No, it's now, not. you don't believe the DS 300 at the end of the day counting all the ballots. No. And then we count the ballot and send it to the office. <laughs> See, you can count a total number of ballots that went through, okay? A thousand ballots went through. No. Did they all vote for the same person? Probably not, but we don't know because we're not comparing. Why not? We put the tape outside the door. Yeah. We're going to go to the precinct, <laughs> right. take a piece of paper, write it down. Right. So it's there's outside a, the door. Yes, the, the machine is totaling by who you by the number of votes for this person, the number of votes for this person, the total number of people that voted. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But what we're saying is, you don't know that it got counted right. So that's we what you're doing. Uh, no, that no. Wait, wait, are you hand counting? Like you're when you're because if we don't do that, we have a huge misunderstanding. Yeah, when yeah. I when it's I do the voting systems office. inspector, I can see the number, I do the tape, I tape it on, you know, the deputy tapes it on the door. So we have the totals. What we're saying is Florida touts, their gold standard, part of it is paper ballot. But if you want to, you know, don't take our word for it. Please, please don't take our word for it. Do the research. If you want all the references, we'll give it to you. All the statutes, we'll give it to you. Data, look at Kill Chain on Netflix. Those, that's like the preeminent oh, yeah, experts. We're talking about the late yeah, county good. election procedure. We are. We don't. We, we don't, don't want a Democrat's vote stolen. Every single exactly. registered voter no. in the entire country deserves to have their vote counted as long as they are lawful voters. Every person. Yeah. 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 You know, there's a misunderstanding going on. Yeah. Another piece of the puzzle is, another piece of the puzzle is, when you, when you like, just open up a bet, let me explain something. I guess some of the people don't understand. When you open up the polls, yes. you have ballots. Right. They all have numbers on them. Every single one of them have a different number on them. No, they don't. No, they Let's say do. No, they don't. No, they don't. Nope. Yeah, exactly. no, no, no. There's no way a ballot can be tracked to a particular person. Right. The closest you could come to that is looking right. at the time stamps from when okay. somebody signed yeah. in. And every when package, okay, has a hundred. Yeah. Every package has a hundred ballots in it. At the end of the day. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> how many ballots went through the machine? How many ballots do you have left? Right. Okay. Right. That's your total. That's, 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 that's not the race. No, no, that's not what? That's not the race. No, that's fine. were on the ballot? Yeah, but everybody that's got nothing to do with it. We're talking yeah. about how many yes. ballots. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 Really? We're not counting papers. We're counting votes on particular candidates' races. 
I just yeah, you're not saying that. Want to vote louder for somebody, is not they necessarily bad. Right. That's right. That's taken into consideration. Let's just talk about it. That happens a lot. I don't want you to know who I voted for. Are you kidding me? We don't know. We don't know. It's not going to do with us. You don't know. The, uh, we were 10 minutes to 9. We were going to do a little Q&A and a free form thing. <laughs> and I, I think that's exactly what we've done here, folks. And I don't, I don't want to like have anybody team. leave here with any hard feelings at all. We're just trying to discuss a very, very important and personal. <clears throat> For me, this is probably one of the most personal our issues that I have as a citizen of this country. Okay, I want to make okay. one more and, one more And comment. so we're, we're going to be here till now. We're going to shut the thing down at 9 o'clock. we got 10 minutes. How do you want to do it? I, I want you to make one more, off? one more comment. Yeah. <laughs> so Mary earlier brought up... S Sue wants to end it for us. Not, yeah. not going to end it because it will never be over. So Mary made a comment about the bank. So as you were saying... You open your till, you have a certain number of 20s, 10s, 1s, and 5s, right? You have that listed out, okay? Well, it is like an election. It's a candidate as a 20, a candidate as a 10, a candidate as a 5, a candidate yes. as a 1, okay? No. So, at the end... No, because you've got under votes and you've got over votes. She's You're trying not to do some oh, okay. Okay. Just, I'm trying to do this is an analogy. Let her finish this her example. point. This is an example. They've okay, so worked an the awful lot more on this than you have. When you close your till, you count how many 20s you have, how many 10s you have, how many 5s you have, and how many 1s you have. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, that is what we're trying to say the machines aren't doing. Okay, but, but I, as, as a voter, okay, when I pick up my ballot, mm -hmm. okay, I have the rights to vote for just one sure. candidate. Yes. Yes. I don't right. have to vote for everybody. Right. Exactly. My That's vote right. is still counted. Yes. That's so right. you're saying to me, so that 20 didn't get voted for by me. Maybe by him. And it you know what? You can maybe by him it didn't. And you so know what? It's still a number. He's looking at the paper because what if they counted your vote for someone you didn't? What if you didn't vote in? You can't. Oh, you can. You're never going to know. The machines can be programmed. They can be pre-programmed. Yep, that's the issue. The You're assuming a giant conspiracy, and there no, is no, not. We have a giant conspiracy that they literally killed people. Anyone vote twice in the last election? Show them the names. Show them the data. Make them go through all of it. Yeah, it's so. Okay. There's a hundred thousand Republican voters.